The thing about Greenpeace is that they commit crimes. Unlike most criminals though, they actually boast about it. They don't try to hide it. They turn the crime into a gimmick, a media stunt. And of course, the media laps it up every time. Quick example, a few years back in Calgary, Greenpeace activists broke into and then broke out of the Calgary Tower, unfurling a big banner. The cops are always gentle with Greenpeace. In that case, they actually held back traffic for Greenpeace to commit their crimes. And another trademark in how Greenpeace commits its crimes is it always has little cannon fodder young people doing it. The head honchos, the chief executives back at Greenpeace never actually dirty their hands and never get charged themselves. Well, news comes now that Greenpeace has committed what looks on the face of it to be another crime, namely the act of piracy. Greenpeace has stolen aboard a over an offshore drilling vessel, which is a form of a ship in a way, that is headed to the Arctic to drill. And as you can see, they turn this into a media stunt too. Look at some of the gorgeously produced crime evidence of the planning for the break-in. A big thing is to tell Shell that it is too dangerous to go drill in the Arctic. I've chosen to be here because the world needs to take action and needs to stop extracting fossil fuels and burning it. You know, to find the courage deep inside to tell, in this case, oil companies that they won't accept this. This is not okay. This is just insane. It's a no-go. And if we want to stop climate change, Shell can't go there. I think at this point the only way to change things is if we do it ourselves. It'd be great if politicians could control companies like Shell keep it under wraps, but history has shown us that that's not going to happen. So now we have to make the change. They're boasting about it, gorgeously shot. Normally I wouldn't call such a thing a crime. I would call it an alleged crime. I don't even think these folks have been charged yet, but Greenpeace isn't so shy. They use their audacity as a way of raising funds. They do not hide what they do. In fact, they're counting on being prosecuted here. Let me read you one tweet from a Greenpeace activist so proud of what she was doing. Aaliyah Field said, we made it. We're on Shell's platform and we're not alone. Everyone can help turn this into a platform for people power. Yeah, now if you were breaking into someone's home or office or carjacking a car, would you really boast about it in a tweet? Well, Greenpeace is boasting about breaking onto a seagoing vessel for their own political purposes. It's clearly outlaw, it's clearly unlawful. And it reminds me a little bit of Paul Watson and the Sea Shepherd Society. His specialty is piracy too. And in fact, he's being charged. Take a look at this video of Paul Watson in action. I don't doubt that there is some allure to pirates. Johnny Depp of Pirates of the Caribbean made them seem sexy and harmless. But at the end of the day, it is illegal. Greenpeace has never been bothered that by that before. But I got a question for you, two actually. The first is, I appreciate the fact that Greenpeace says they care about the environment. But Greenpeace itself has done tremendous damage to the environment. And I'm not just talking about their use of heavy bunker fuel in their own ship, their pirate ship that they used to attack the shell vessel. I'm talking about their stunt, for example, last year in Lima, Peru, where they went into the ancient cultural heritage site of the Nazca Lines in Peru and made a sign in the dirt that is indelible, that is they wrecked a, cult a cultural and historical gem, a world heritage site practically, to make a stupid stunt. Greenpeace cared more about publicity than about the environment in Lima, Peru. Of course, they've been charged there as well. So my first point is that Greenpeace actually cares more about stunts than about the environments we can see in Lima. But my second question is this. Shell is a big oil company, it's true, but it's nowhere near the biggest oil company in the world, not by a long shot. Shell is a tiny oil company compared to the big ones. I mean companies like Saudi Aramco, the state-owned oil company in Saudi Arabia, or the Iran National Oil Company. All of the OPEC regimes have state-owned companies, Venezuela, Iraq even. 
These are the biggest companies and most of the time they are the least regulated. You don't exactly have strong environmental laws in a dictatorship when the dictator himself owns the oil rig. So why is it that Greenpeace went after Shell, one of the most heavily regulated companies in a Western democracy, it's headquartered both in Holland and England, regulated by environmental laws, by open courts, by independent courts, by the free press. Why would Greenpeace go after Shell, a little fish, in comparison to the sharks of Saudi Aramco and Iran? Well, the answer is obvious. You try getting on a Saudi or Iranian oil vessel, they'll kill you. You go into the Calgary Tower or Shell, yeah, they'll give you a warm meal, a dry towel, and they'll escort you to the police who'll give you a slap on the wrist. Greenpeace is actually not against oil. They're just against ethical oil from the free world. They have nothing to say about conflict oil from places like Saudi Arabia. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.